Welcome back, everyone, and congratulations on making it this far into the project. It's been a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. We're learning a lot. We are now getting into the more interesting parts of this project, which is the async report generation. We've got quite a few dependencies that we need to set up in order to accomplish the report generation. We've got some AWS infrastructure that we need to provision. We're, of course, going to do this locally using local stack. Made a video on that previously. Go check that out if you haven't already. We're going to be setting up an S3 bucket to store the report outputs. And we're going to be setting up a SQS queue, uh, which will handle the async report generation through an SQS worker, which is going to be receiving messages off of the queue. Just a reminder, we're going to be fetching data from a Legend of Zelda API. We're going to be converting that response to a CSV, and we're going to be writing that CSV to a S3 bucket. And then we're going to make that report actually available for the client to download via a S3 pre-signed URL. So we've got all of that work to do still, and we still need to create our data access layer for the report jobs. That's going to be managing the state of the job, whether it's in progress, completed or failed, and we'll be relaying that information to the client as the client is going to be polling for that information. I want to ask one thing, if you're enjoying this series so far, please do me a favor, like the videos and consider subscribing. That's super helpful for a small channel like mine. I think what we're going to do first is get our local stack Docker Compose container set up so that we can start working on provisioning our AWS resources. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got a tab open here for starting local stack with Docker Compose. It's just on the official local stack docs on getting started. I'm just going to copy all the way up to this local stack container name here and paste that into my project. We're going to paste it right underneath test DB. We'll make sure everything's lined up because YAML can be a bitch if you don't get those spaces right. Okay, so let's go ahead and do Docker compose up. Uh, conflict container name local stack main is already in use by another container. Pretty sure I've used this in another project, so I will just kill that container using Docker Desktop. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is just delete this and see what happens here. Cool, that worked. Now that we've got local stack running via Docker Compose, I want to go ahead and add a few environment variables that will make it possible so that we can set up our Terraform locally using local stack. It's going to be some AWS environment variables and uh, just some config values for our SQS queue name and our S3 bucket name. So let's go ahead and go to our ENVRC. I'm going to do export AWS, AWS access key ID. This is just going to be a dummy value. I don't actually need to connect to AWS for this. AWS access key dummy export AWS default region. In order to reference these environment variables in Terraform, I need to actually export them as a new environment variable name. It's basically the same thing, just prefixed with TF var. And if this is new to you, I've got another video on this. Go ahead and check that out as well. So it's tf var, and then I'm just going to do the same name, just lowercase, because this is how I'm going to reference this name in actual Terraform HCL code. And I'm just going to use the same environment variable there. And I want to add environment variables also for the SQSQ name and the S3 bucket. And once again, we need to expose these to Terraform so that they can be used as variables in the Terraform code. That looks great. I think now we can go ahead and get our Terraform project initialized. All right, so I'm going to go to the Terraform docs here. Actually, these are the local stack docs for getting started with Terraform. They've got pretty much everything I need to get started here. Basically, it uses these environment variables that I've set up. We have some configuration options here that they actually tell you to use, as well as endpoint override. And we can just basically copy all of this, and it even gives us the code to set up our S3 bucket locally. So 
we will go ahead and copy this and just replace some of these values with the environment variables that we just set up. Okay. I'm going to create a Terraform directory and I'm going to put a main.tf in there. Inside of there, I'm just going to paste whatever we had. And at the top, do something like that. And now I need to declare the variables at the top so that we can reference them in our Terraform code. These are going to map to the key names that we assigned here. Now we have all of those variables exposed via Terraform. Now I can start replacing them here. Bucket name will be S3 bucket. And now what I want to do is also set up the SQSQ in Terraform. So let's go to the Terraform docs over here. I can copy, I think, most of this. The name will be the SQSQ variable that we imported. And I'm going to delete a lot of this other stuff. I'm not going to have a redrive policy here. Uh, if you want to set some maximum number of retries, you can set up a dead letter queue so that the message will go there after a certain number of failures. I'm not going to do that for this. I did that in a previous video, so go check that out if you're interested. Most of these other things are fine. Delay seconds, this is the number of seconds that will pass before the message is visible in the queue. So I'm going to make this a lot shorter, something like five. Message retention, that seems fine. Receive wait time seconds, I'll leave that as is for now. So now I think we can do CD into Terraform, do Terraform init. Okay, I'm going to do Terraform plan. All right, cool. So I can see that it's going to create a, I kind of want to rename this to reports, SQSQ. That's fine. S3 bucket. Reports SQSQ, reports S3 bucket. That looks good to me. Let's do Terraform apply. I'm going to do auto approve so I don't have to click yes. Aha, one thing I'm missing here. The endpoint needs to be overridden for SQS as well. Let's go back to these docs. We need to say SQS has this URL. For some reason, the S3 one is overridden this way, and they have an explanation somewhere up here for that. So let's do this. So now that these resources are created, I want to go ahead and check through the command line that they are indeed created. So I will go ahead and do that. Cool. So now I can see that if I provide a endpoint URL override, I can list this queue. Let's do the same thing for the S3 bucket. Okay, so now you can see there is a API reports bucket that was created. Cool, so this all looks good. The next thing I wanna do is actually make sure that we can connect through our Go code using the AWS SDK. So let's make sure that we can connect to the S3 bucket and the queue that we just created. Okay, we've got some Go packages we need to install. We need to install the AWS SDK. I've already got these prepared for us, so it's these packages from the AWS SDK v2. So let me do this. Okay, cool. So those are installed. Now I want to look at some examples here of how to get started with the SDK. This is perfect. I just want to basically create a config. This is going to look at the environment variables that we set up. And we're going to create a S3 client using this constructor. And then from there, we can just list all the buckets or get the bucket and just verify that we're able to connect. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just copy this code real quick and create a sample script that we can run. All right, we've pulled in the config package. We've pulled in the service S3 package. And let's do s3 client dot list buckets. Let's just try that for now. That looks good. I think that can be empty.
All right, so we've got this quick script written. I just want to make sure that we can access this bucket that we have created via Terraform. One thing I forgot here, we also have to override the S3 URL in the code. When we say new from config, we need to pass in an option that overrides our URL as was done here. So let's go ahead and do one of those options. Let's say options dot base endpoint is equal to adbus string. For now, I'm going to copy this value. This adbus string value is basically converting it to a pointer. This value is a pointer, so I need to actually access the value, or sorry, dereference the pointer. Okay, so that is correct. That looks good. I want to make sure that I'm setting this as a config variable so that I can reference this in other places of our code. And I also want to expose this in our Terraform code as well. And we're going to want to do the same thing with this SQS URL. So let's just call this our local stack endpoint. And now I want to go to our Go app config and make sure that these values are populated. So now I'm going to create our app config. I want to call this AWS config so that there's no collision in the package names. And there's actually going to be one more configuration option we're going to want to do here, which is use path style true. This just makes it so that when we download the pre-signed URLs at a later point that we can use like sort of a URL directory path style. This is just a weird quirk of using local stack. So what we would really need to do is say, you know, if config.env is not equal to production, boom, do these local things. So not a big deal. Maybe a little hacky, but whatever. So let's go ahead and run this code again. And we can print out the buckets. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for our SQS client. Okay, so let's try it again. Cool, and it identified the queue URL for the reports SQS queue that we've created. So this looks good. In the future, when we set up various apps or we provide these clients as dependencies, this is how we will need to construct them so that we can use them. Okay, so now that we've got these clients created, we've got one more thing that's actually blocking us from being able to start our report creation, and that's actually the data access layer for the reports table. We need some way to be able to update the status of the report as we're generating it and be able to tell the client it's either in progress, it's completed, or it's failed. So that's actually what we're gonna work on next so that we can then start working on the report generation piece.